So I've been getting back into Homestuck lately, and because of that, I'm doing one of the classic fandom activities by designing a fan troll and fan kid while walking you through my design process, and eventually I'm going to tell you a bit about my own history with Homestuck as a fandom, and why getting back into it means so much to me as an adult. Firstly though, let's get into why you're here. You want to see my cringy fan characters, right? The first design that I worked on, Sky Mulder, she's at the time of the game about 16 years of age. I wanted her design to reflect two characters that I really like in the series, Roxy and Rose respectively. Sky is a relatively superstitious kid with a penchant for believing the fantastical. She is obsessed with all things aliens, conspiracy theories, and cryptids, so I make the emblem on her shirt reflect that by making it an alien. She also uses a crochet hook, as she's very good at crochet, and it's a serious hobby of hers. Characters in Homestuck typically have flat white skin and either white or black hair. I chose to give her white hair because I thought it would look interesting against the black sleeves that I was going to give her, and it could break up the design with a little headband as a nod to Rose. I would say Skye is similar to John Egbert in personality because she's very exuberant, she is kind of a goofball, and she's very interested in aliens, similar to John being very interested in blue women. And while she thinks that aliens are secretly taking over the world, which if you read Homestuck is semi-true, she would still find them absolutely fascinating and ask tons of questions should she ever meet one. So here's Sky Mulder's final design. I gave her some pink accents to contrast with the green and give her more of a complementary color scheme. And while I think she came out great, there's a couple of different things I would do differently should I design her again in the future. It was really fun working with the Homestuck style because I don't typically work with pixel style brushes and I've been suffering from an art block lately so this was a fun way to break out of the monotony. Moving on to the next character. We have my fan troll, Rakali Radis, who I had a ton of fun working on, and he's kind of my baby now. So first things first, about designing trolls. Trolls have a couple of design conventions. They all have gray skin and candy corn horns. The horns sometimes reflect the zodiac symbol that they have, but not always. In the case of Nepeta, her zodiac symbol has a lot of curves, but her horns are meant to look like cat ears, so you'll see that this is something that I took inspiration of for Rakali, in that his horns are meant to look more like rat's ears. The other thing of note is the hemospectrum. All trolls fall on a different blood color, which corresponds to their cast in the hemospectrum. And originally, since Rakali is based off a rat, I wanted him to be in olive blood, which you see is typically associated with animals. But I changed it for a reason that I think is more in line with what I want for his character and for his design. With my fan troll, I was tempted to make a girl, but I have a lot of girl OCs. So I decided to actually make him a guy because of the concept of the Rat King. So I figured maybe he'd have an alternate outfit that's themed after royalty and I'll probably do that at a later date. I knew I was going to make him based off of a lab rat, so I decided on the rust blood color to reflect the eyes of albino rats that are so associated with experiments and scientists. Um, the other thing is, is that I gave him a long lab coat and some paw slippers to make it seem like he's kind of working all the time, even at home and in his sleep on different experiments. I used to actually have a rat fan troll, in fact named Rakali a long time ago, and this is a good redesign of what that character was, but going in a totally different direction. Speaking of long ago, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my personal relationship with Homestuck. So without further ado, thank you to those who got this far, 
And if you're buckling in for the rest of this, then I want to give a brief trigger warning for mentions of bullying, mental illness, and grooming. I found out about Homestuck in the typical way someone found out about anything in 2010. On Tumblr. Okay, maybe not everyone, but certainly people in my demographic. Undiagnosed autistic women with an affinity for esoteric nonsense and an ironic appreciation of cheesy things. In that sense, the character Dave really appealed to me at first. I wanted to be thought of as cool and detached like that, but I think my over-enthusiasm came off more like John. At that time that I get into Homestuck, I am about 15 years old. I'm at this kind of awkward stage of puberty where I'm filling out, but I don't really know what my style is, so I just stuck to wearing overalls and a big jacket, and no matter what I do, I just look a bit chubby. Um, It was the early 2000s, and we all had a bad relationship with our bodies. There was another person in school with my name, and for a time we were friends, and to distinguish us when people referred to me, they'd call me the Fat Danny. I have short hair for the first time ever in my life, and I begin styling it like Rose. I really want to bleach it white like the other Danny did for her Dave cosplays. The last few remaining remnants of the scene style are stuck to my t-shirts, though I was never able to fit into skinny jeans. I'm acutely aware of how I look since, at this time, I'm a teenager. I started drawing a lot of fan art. I mean, a lot of it. For ships, favorite characters, for human versions of the trolls. Did I mention the trolls before? If you know Homestuck, then I'm sorry to bore you. But, like I said in the beginning, the trolls are such a key part of what made Homestuck such a phenomenon. They're a race of interdimensional aliens, they have candy corn horns and gray skin, as well as different colored blood, like I said, which corresponds to their cast in the hemospectrum, aptly named for the amalgamation of blood and the visible light spectrum, in case you are wondering why it's called that. The highest casts are denoted by these fish-like versions of the trolls, the highest of all being my patron troll, Fefre Pesces. A patron troll is a lot like a patron saint in the sense that they're a term the fandom came up with to mean the character that represented you. The way that this works is that the trolls all have an astrological sign associated with them, and the troll with your astrological sign is your patron troll. It doesn't have to be your favorite troll, but in my case, Fefri was my favorite. And it's not even because she was particularly interesting in canon, but I just felt like she had so much potential in my mind. I was also a sucker for one-sided romance at the time, and I found the Aridan stuff especially interesting. It wasn't actually, but in my head I just romanticized the idea of being wanted. I used to roleplay too, on places like Trollmeagle and other sites that have been lost to time and my memories. I used to hand type out the quirks, the unique ways in which the trolls have of typing to indicate their unique voices. Through this, I didn't necessarily discover being bisexual, but I experimented with it a lot more. The anonymous nature and the mask of a character made these interactions so much easier. Where the joke at school was that every girl is bisexual if she's at a party. I think my shortcomings were more or less that I'd never been with a girl at the time, and it was scary when I didn't have a lot of close female friends, and I was worried that even if they were gay in some way, they wouldn't like me regardless, and I didn't know why. I'd always been treated as an outsider looking in, and the role-playing felt so organic and free because for once, I could be someone other than me. Fast forward to 16. I'm now sticking with the short hair. It's pink. I get really into Rocky Horror alongside Homestuck, and I draw fan art of a crossover. Anyways, I started cosplaying now, and of course I'm going as Feffery. My friend, the other Danny, is going as Dave. I'm emotionally unstable at this time, and our friendship doesn't last very long. At a convention, someone compliments me on my cosplay, and I say thank you, and then something that they add just kind of cuts me. Yeah, I always love the headcanon for a fat Feffery. I don't stop cosplaying, but I do get more into roleplaying because I meet this woman. 
I meet her on Trollmeagle and she's an Aridin role player. She likes to roleplay scenarios in which Aridin is forgiven for something he's done in the narrative by Feffery. In the narrative of Homestuck, Aridin actually kills Feffery, partly out of jealousy and indignation that she won't like troll date him. This woman is about 21 and I'm 16 going on 17. She wants to date me. I've never been with a woman. I get really excited and I latch onto her so, so desperately. I'm also in a weirdly unhealthy relationship with a boy my age and I break up with him in order to date her. Eventually, I go to her house where she instructs me to lie about my age to her parents and I do so badly. I've never done that before and I think, is this normal in relationships with girls? I go home. She breaks up with me after my pet rat dies. She calls me that night, drunk. She's often drunk when I'm upset on the phone and tells me that if I don't learn to love myself soon, then nobody will love me. I'm 17, I still cosplay. My last remaining friends from school in the AP Fine Arts program cosplay with me. I'm going as one of the Dancesters. They're essentially trolls, but they're like related to the original trolls we meet in the series. It's complicated. I'm going as Latula. I turn 18. I had some argument with one of them about the other Danny, to which point I never see them again. I get out of Homestuck and I stop cosplaying altogether. Well, not true. I was at art school and visiting my parents for a bit when I saw one of them working the register at the Second and Charles, which is like a thrift store for books. I didn't acknowledge that we knew each other. A few months after this, I get introduced to a guy who likes Homestuck through Tumblr. We talk on Yahoo I Am, and we were both in the MSPA forums. We hit it off a lot. We're actually getting married next summer. I'm getting back into Homestuck again. Well, that's all I have to really share with you today. I hope that you like the designs and the illustration that I made that kind of encompasses my sort of relationship with Homestuck and that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. You can uh, sub to me on my Patreon, you can follow me on Twitter or any other social media. I really enjoy you being here and watching this and thank you so much!